Let's have a lens ray tracing extravaganza. I guarantee you that if you remember that a lens that's shaped like this causes the rays to converge at the line of action, they go like this and they converge upon the focus. Well, I guess they keep continuing in their paths and then they would then diverge, but here we've definitely got converging. And uh, well, you also should remember that four rays, well, let's do five, it's a little more fun, coming into something like this, a lens that looks like that would cause them to diverge at the line of action and this one will go up and this guy will go down, this guy will go way up and this guy will go way down. So if you put your eye over here, you'd be all like, what would you be like? You'd be like looking pretty at that and, oh, look at those eyelashes, wonderful. So you'd think that there was something there. Where would you think something was? You'd think something was back here causing those rays to come out at a single point. So this is where you would locate your object. Just remember that concave lenses diverge and convex lenses converge exactly in the opposite way of mirrors, but remember that and you can always check your work. Here we go. I'm gonna go through um, some few, uh, few uh, converging lenses. We'll start with the M-Ray, which is my personal favorite. The M-Ray comes straight at the center. I'll start by drawing a line of action. Here's a line of action for this particular lens. And everything's going to happen right there. I agree that the stuff is happening at the surface of this glass and then at the exit surface of the glass. But when we draw ray diagrams, we have to pretend that it's all happening exactly at that thin plane of the line of action of the sucker. So the M comes in and goes out like it ain't no thing. Check it out and it's gone. So let's do another one. We want a P-Ray. P-Ray I'm gonna do in green because it starts with P, I mean, sorry. <laughs> okay, so the P-Ray comes in parallel and the P-Ray is supposed to be like this. It's supposed to come in parallel and then it's supposed to go towards the focus, right? So here's my P-Ray and P-Ray is probably gonna do something like this. Pew! And be gone. Okay, so we got a P-Ray going this direction and the M rays going that direction. The F ray though, see the F ray doesn't go, does it? Sure, we'll have the F ray go straight for the focus. The F ray though is in blue, here we go. F ray goes in blue and hits the line of action of the mirror and goes over horizontally. Lo and behold, this one's going to work out just fine. You see the rays converging at a single location? Well, my friends, this, oh, sorry, students, I'm not talking to you, you're not my friends. Everybody else, you guys can be my friends. That's our image. And we can define the same sorts of things. We can define the distance of the object over here and the distance of the image over here. And I suppose since the image is on the expected opposite side of the lens and it's a real image, then the distance of the image is positive, the distance of the object is positive. But what about the height of the object? There we go, and the height of the image. Well, clearly this is positive and that's negative. That's fine, okay. So where the rays converge, we actually have a real image. That's real, let's do another one. This one's a little bit closer to the focus. Let's see what happens. I'll start you out with an M-ray. We're going in here to the line of action. We don't even have a line of action, so let's get one. Line of action, boom. Ray comes in, green, no, purple, because it's the M-ray, and purple starts with, Never mind. Okay, so it does that. Comes in, and now we need the purple ray, I mean the P-ray, and it's gonna come in parallel and hit the line of action of the mirror and Boom, go out through the focus. Goodbye, purple ray, I mean P ray. Goes that way. Mm hmm. And then we've got ourselves a little bit of F ray. F ray is hitting the focus. Now, don't let this stress you out. My F ray is going to be outside of my mirror entirely, but I'm supposed to pretend like the mirror extends for all of infinity. Now, let's be honest. This F ray is actually not, ooh, that's a really bad, really, really bad result. Ew, what the heck happened? I can't figure it out. All right, so <laughs> we'll just have to deal with it. This F-ray is not actually, the F-ray is not actually going to 
B forming the image. The F ray just goes over here and it never hits the lens at all. However, the F ray as a mental tool is very important for us because we pretend like it hits the image because then we can still define where the object is. And uh, personally, if I saw something nasty like this, I would say it looks like it's supposed to be somewhere either here or here. I might split the difference between those guys and say that the image is right here. But the image is definitely bigger than the object and inverted, so we could say it's magnified and that'd be cool. We could define magnification. Should we do that formally? Magnification is defined as the height of the image divided by the height of the object. Chances are it's going to be negative if we've got ourselves a real image. These rays are actually converging here. Oh, I was going to say something else about these principal rays. These three principal rays, M, P, and F, don't need to be there to make the image happen. In fact, we could cover up the top half of this mirror and we'd still get ourselves a beautiful image or the bottom half or vice versa, you know, really anything you want. You could have a little tiny slice of mirror and you could still get yourself an image here. The principal rays help us identify where the image is, but the image forms regardless of how much of the lens is present. Ooh, that's pretty profound. What if we put, ooh, what if we put the object at the focus itself? Now, our F ray is not gonna be well defined, but I'll get you a line of action. Here's our line of action of the mirror. Oh, I think maybe my line of action wasn't exactly normal to my principal axis last time. That could be the problem. All right, so I'm gonna draw you an M-ray and the M-ray comes in here and it goes through the center and it just leaves. Pow! And that's because it's hitting at the same angle as it's exiting. And so it might have a shift in here, but it's certainly going to be parallel upon entry and exit. That's not the case with any of the other rays. I have a book that likes you to model these, um, these lenses like this as one prism that direction and another prism that direction. So then you see light comes in here and it's all like pew! And this one's all like pew! And so that's why there's a focus here. I don't know, maybe that helps, whatever. There's, um, there's a P-ray, the P-ray is still well defined. I'm gonna come in here parallel and then I'm going to head towards, come in parallel, at the line of action, I'm gonna head towards the focal point. And that means that I'm gonna be doing this. Wait for it, wait for it. Uh-oh, where do those two rays meet? Hint, it's a long way that direction. Wow, that means the magnification is infinite, but the image is infinitely far away, which could be problematic for you. I don't know, do you really care if there's an image infinitely far away? Maybe you do. Next up. Oh, haha, <laughs> another thing to say, don't put your object at the focal point because then your rays will never converge. Or vice versa, all of these diagrams work the other direction. If I have rays coming in from infinitely far away, they will focus at the focal point, that defines the focal point as we'll see in a lab if you're in my class. Check this out. I could put the object inside the focal length. Let's try it. I get an M-ray with purple. Oh, I need a line of action. I'm so sorry. Here's a line of action. Seems like my line of action is about normal to my page. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go like this with my M-ray. Gone. Now, this is kind of strange. The P ray is parallel. That's not going to be too bad. The P ray is parallel, and I can draw it like this. It's parallel until it hits the mirror, and then suddenly it shoots for the focus. There we go. Shooting for the focus right there. There's my P ray. Shooting for the focus. Pow! Hit the focus. Fine. But the <clears throat> maybe the F ray is the trickiest one. The F ray doesn't actually go towards the focus because what would that even mean? I'm going to assume that it came from the focus and is going to hit the lens. Again, we find that it just barely hits the lens, but that's okay with us. But it's going that direction. Let me reiterate that this one is leaving the object and this one is leaving the object. The whole point is the object must be illuminated or actually emanating light. I don't care, it could be luminous or illuminated, either one. But that ray then will hit the mirror and it will bend. Wait a second, is this a converging? Wait, it doesn't look like it's converging either. This is problematic. See, these rays are very strongly diverging because we're so close to this object. So since the rays are so strongly diverging, we're gonna find that this lens is doing its best to make them converge, but it can't quite, because they're really strongly diverging. So this will come in as if it came from the focus and it's gonna come out parallel. That's the game, right? It's gonna come out parallel like this. Would you at least agree 
that these three rays are closer to um, converging than those three rays are. These three rays are like, wow, psh, strongly diverging, and these three rays are not as strongly diverging. So here's the result. If you look over here with those pretty blue eyes and you put some, yeah, put on some mascara, that's a good idea. So then you're looking over here with the eye of physics and you presume an object to exist over there. That's what an image is in this kind of a case. And I'm gonna draw some dotted lines here. I think I should draw a dotted blue line. You see, you look at this ray and you think that this ray came from inside the lens. You think that ray was back here, somewhere along this line, which is the sloppiest blue line I have ever dotted. Then there's a green one. And the green one seems to have come from somewhere back here. You're thinking, da 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 somewhere, who knows, right? And then the purple ray, the purple ray, the M ray seems to have come from somewhere back here also. See, the purple ray seems to have come from, oh dang, they all seem to have come from a single point. You want to identify this location as the location of the image? This is the object here, and this is the image here. The image is bigger than the object. We have magnification, my friends. That's awesome, but it's in not inverted. Ooh, it's upright. We have an upright image, and there's not actually a converging of rays over here. You only perceive a converging of rays if you're over on that side, so it must be a virtual image. Cool. Again, we find that things that converge tend to make things very complicated if you're inside the focal point versus if you're out. Virtual image, not inverted, not actually a convergence of rays, but an apparent object. It is apparently the thing that you see when you look into the lens. Cool, try some lenses. Now, oh, I'll stop here, and then the next video will be on diverging lenses. Goodbye.